I've been fortunate to hunt pronghorn in Wyoming a couple of times with my bow, but in both cases it was over water holes, sitting there waiting for the animals to come to a spot, much more of a controlled environment than a spot and stock hunt like we have here. Now you've got a lot of experience with this type of hunting. What, what are some of the keys to getting close to an animal? Having trees like that. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, this is right flat there. out unusual. This, I uh, mean, all the timber you're right. hunting around to have antelope in a situation like that. A lot of times you, the antelope will be near timber, but some, but oftentimes not close enough to utilize right, the timber. Sure. So uh, if they can utilize this timber as and the terrain to get in close, I'd say that's the key is to use any little roll uh, any little brush pocket, any little tree, and and these antelope, from the way it looks right here, they're living right in the trees. That looks right? like that should be a whitetail or a mule deer it, standing it there. Right. Now this doesn't look like it's a real big buck. It's definitely not a monster antelope, but I'd say it's a good representative antelope. And just the uniqueness of this hunt, the fact that you get to hunt antelope in the timber and have so much cover, exactly. I mean, what a luxury to hunt antelope, exactly. especially when you're stalking. That, uh, uh, I'd definitely consider shooting an animal and you're, like this. You're not going to get as many chances on a hunt like this as you would on a classic waterhole hunt where you can just watch animal after animal after animal come in and really judge horns at close range. Definitely. You've got to take your shots when you get them in a situation like this. And I'm guessing in, a, in an area like this too, it's not at high a density. You're, you're probably right. dealing with a few limited animals. And from the looks of this, this animal's by himself. So again, he set himself up in a bad, bad position. There is a bold move right there. Because anytime this antelope could look over his shoulder. Exactly. You're right. In fact, he can almost see right now the antelope. If you look, his head's cocked just a yeah, little. Yeah, their peripheral vision, if you will, is unbelievable. I mean, that, that guy, that's a gutsy That's amazing move. that that animal hasn't spotted him. I, I'm, I'm amazed as well. Well, he's cut the distance by at least five or six yards. Yeah, he's got to be, he's, it said 46 yards, and if he just made this move right now, he's got to be close to... Now, from where he's shooting, if you look, there's that one limb one. going up over there. That, that would be a little bit of concern to me, because it, it appears such that it is possibly lined up at that angle, almost directly with the heart and lung area. Right. Now, it looks like the position of the animal is perfect, slightly quartering away, right. eyes are away, everything looks like it's a go for the shot, so... If you're comfortable with the distance, the angle's right. Now, it looked like the shot was perfect. You yes, can see that the arrow actually had quite a bit of arc to it, was, so it's yeah. a little farther than perhaps what it looked like on, on still film at least here. 40 yards. And it looked like the animal actually re reacted a little bit to his bow, but it must have been in his favor because you could see the blood just pouring out of that entrance hole. And that pronghorn took off. That, that is an unusual buck. He's really heavy, massive all the way up, but just, you know, a little weak on the prong, but uh, still a pretty good trophy, I'd say.